everybody. It's me. C N P. And today I am back with another ASMR video. Today I wanted to take some time and answer one of the most frequently asked questions I get across all of my socials. Why don't you stream on Twitch? Now, Twitch has become somewhat of a dumpster fire in the last two weeks alone, but it goes much deeper than that. Obviously, as you can tell by this video, I do ASMR content, and I will touch on Twitch's inability to monitor ASMR content later on in this video. The additional drama that has been going down on Twitch has nothing to do with my initial thought of Twitch as a platform, but it certainly is the icing on the cake as to why I just don't stream on Twitch. I'm not going to follow any of this drama in today's video, uh, but just know that there's quite a lot of stuff going down over there on the platform. Those that have been following me for a while know that I have spent some time developing and promoting my Twitch over the last two years. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash collective play, by the way. And yes, I've even had a few one-off streams every now and then, but by and large, I don't like Twitch. And here's why. Twitch doesn't like me. Let me explain. Let's start with discoverability or more so the lack thereof that's on Twitch. In the last three months, I have streamed only three days on Twitch. And on those three days that I streamed, I gained a staggering 40 new followers. <laughs> but what about the days I didn't stream? Surprisingly, I was still gaining followers. How could I gain followers on Twitch without streaming if there's no discoverability, you might ask? Well, I was able to grow on days I didn't stream because it's embedded in every video I do in the bottom of my screen on YouTube. It's in the description of every vote video that I post on YouTube. And people have been discovering my Twitch through YouTube and TikTok, two platforms that have insane discoverability at the moment. YouTube streaming has made massive strides in the last six months alone allowing gifted memberships, as well as adding a host or a raid system. And yes, I know that this is definitely not the easiest process as a creator, but it's brand new and I wouldn't expect it to be perfect right off the bat. And even TikTok has started giving out stream keys, allowing gaming creators to stream high quality gaming to their followers. In my opinion, the hardest part of content creation is building an initial community, especially on Twitch. And if there's no discoverability on Twitch, that means you have to build a community somewhere else and bring them in from there. But what's the point of that? If you build the community on TikTok or on YouTube, why not just use that platform to stream? Moving on, let's talk about donations. I will say that Twitch's affiliate program is much easier to reach than YouTube's partner program. However, starting in early 2023, as announced literally yesterday, YouTube creators will no longer have to be in the partner program to receive fan funding like Super Chats and memberships. So while you're grinding away trying to make it to the YouTube Partner Program, which will unlock ad revenue to then be earned, your audience will be able to support you. Speaking of donations, I want this part to be very clear. YouTube takes less of a cut of the money you donate than Twitch does. For those of you that didn't know, when you subscribe to someone on Twitch, it costs you $5. But what some of you might not know is Twitch, or more specifically Amazon, takes 50% of that, leaving the content creator with $2.50. Now let's compare the same thing 
on YouTube. When you buy a $5 membership to your favorite content creator, YouTube, which is owned by Google, only takes 30%, leaving the content creator with $3.50. Now, I know this doesn't sound like much, but when you compare a 1,000 Twitch subs to a 1,000 YouTube members, the YouTube creator made $1,000 more for the same support from their community. Now, I've always had a stance of donations are optional and have never once asked for donations. But if people are going to donate, I want them to be able to get the most bang for their buck, which is on YouTube. Next, let's talk about the ecosystem of Twitch. Let's talk about what Twitch offers as a service. First, it has a very user-friendly site that allows content creators to seamlessly go live at any given time to create content and hang out with their community. And second, there is no second. Viewers can clip highlights of your stream, but what actually happens to those clips? And people can go back and watch your recent streams, but what actually happens to those VODs? Short answer is nothing unless you take those clips and you take those VODs and edit them up and put them on, yes, you guessed it, YouTube or TikTok. So let's look at YouTube. If someone comes across my live stream while I'm live and subscribes, they're then going to get my videos and shorts in their sub box. There is no, hey, go subscribe to my YouTube to see my most recent video. It's already done. This will create the opportunity of gaining passive income when you aren't even live, which if done on a large scale could greatly outweigh any donations you would receive while live. Lastly, let's touch on my community, the ASMR community. There is in fact an ASMR category on Twitch, but be warned, enter it at your own risk without going too in-depth on the product that people are producing. I just simply don't want to be associated with it. It's not that I am against what they're doing, I just don't want my content to be in the same conversation of what the ASMR category on Twitch has to offer. It's that type of content that gives ASMR a bad reputation and part of the reason why I'm nervous talking about what I do for a living with friends and family. I get asked this question at least a couple of times a week. Another question I get asked a lot is what platform I would recommend to new content creators trying to get into streaming. My answer, now more than ever, is YouTube with a side of TikTok. Be sure to take advantage of short form content. Short form content is king at the moment. If you are starting from ground zero, I wouldn't even waste my time making a Twitch account. I strongly believe that Twitch won't be around in three to five years, and that's being very generous. A lot of the biggest content creators in the world have already made the swap over to YouTube, and it's for a good reason. I hope this video helped shed some light on why I do what I do and the platforms I choose to do them on. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, drop a like. And of course, if you're into ASMR and gaming content, hit that subscribe button. I've recently gone back to uploading nightly videos, so there will be plenty of content to go around. I just started a playthrough of Spider-Man last night, but there's always a variety of content to be seen on this channel, both the short, long, and live. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace, peace.